The National Alliance for Christian Leadership is an alliance of Christian organisations right across the church spectrum. In other words, we're bringing Christian leaders together. It's basically an educational and political alliance. We got basically involved in this because what we could see happening in the creationist area was legislation against free thought. And we were very much involved in, uh, in fighting the ID cards and what we call the human rights bill, should I say that, the human rights bill. We've been uh, very much, we now have a committee set up for the, uh, what we regard as the unconstitutional commission. So that's basically where we're coming from. So we have very much a stake in this uh, particular area of creation science because we do monitor a lot of the literature. We know, for instance, that uh, basically the trust is not just against creation but against uh, Christianity per se. So I'll wait now, so I'll just pass over to, to, to Barry. This is Barry Williams, who is the current president of the Australian Skeptics. Thank you, John. Uh, Australian Skeptics is a non political, non religious organisation to uh, investigate. Um, claims of paranormal and pseudoscience. Uh, in the case of creationism, the reason why we're here tonight, we regard it as just as much a pseudoscience as we regard astrology or new age phenomena, trans-channeling. We find, we feel that there is no evidence whatsoever to indicate that it has any scientific validity, and we defend that case. We produce uh, uh, a, a book on the topic, which is available in the foyer, if I hold it up the right way. And we also produce quarterly a magazine called The Skeptic, in which we uh, uh, cover a, a multitude of topics, one of which is creationism. Uh, Australian Skeptics will be holding their fourth annual convention at the Manly Green Belief Club on Easter, Saturday and Sunday. You will see the poster outside describing that. If you want any more details, you can see our people afterwards. I hope it will be a fun debate tonight, and uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, we have two distinguished uh, speakers, and uh, very briefly, uh, your first speaker is Dwayne C. Gish. Now, Dr. Gish received his bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of California in 1949. He has a doctorate in biochemistry in 1953 from the same university in the third oh, I two different campuses. Anyway, he spent 18 years in biochemical research, several institutions, including, I'm reading this together, including Cornell University Medical College, the Virus Laboratory of the University of California, Berkeley, the Upjohn Company, I think he has an American accent, a pharmaceutical firm in Kalamazoo, Michigan. During that time, he worked with two Nobel Prize winners. He's the author and co-author of over 30 technical papers. He has authored several books and numerous papers on the subject, which we're about to hear of creation and evolution. He's lectured and debated on this subject at major university campuses. He doesn't say why. Throughout the United States and over 25 foreign countries. <coughs> He's a fellow of the American Institute of Books, chemist, and is a member of the American Chemical Society. I don't know what that is either. And the American Association for the Advancement of Science. He is listed in the American Men of Science and Who's Who of the West. The second speaker is Mr. Plimmer, BSc Honours, PhD. He, it's a bit shorter. He's uh, worked at four different universities. He will speak secondly and he's worked also in the mining industry. He's currently professor and head of the Department of Geology, University of Newcastle. So I think he speaks with a Darren. Anyway, the question is, which is the pseudoscience, creation or evolution? And they're both theories according to the question. So they will, each speaker will speak for 50 minutes on that, and then we'll have a break. So it's an hour and 40 minutes. An hour and 40 minutes. There'll be no break in between the speakers, so please, once Dr. Gish has finished speaking, we'll go straight on with uh, Dr. Pump. So if uh, you'll get a chance to break when Dr. Plymouth uh, finishes, sorry. <coughs> After the break, there'll be a response by each member, and he will speak for 15 minutes each. 
and then there'll be a brief summary by each of them for another five minutes. After which, there will be a chance to ask some questions. And we don't want any questions which are statements. We want nice brief questions, you know, uh, because you'll be cut off <coughs> if you uh, try to make statements that, you know, you believe in God or something. We won't have genuine which question. And uh, apparently, the, the questions are asked, we've got a microphone, so you'll, you'll all get a chance. But uh, anyway, we're running a little bit late, so. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Slimer, and ladies and gentlemen. It certainly is a privilege for me to be here at the University of New South Wales and have the opportunity tonight to present for your consideration some of the results of my research on the subject of origins. Now, of course, we recognize that this is a controversial subject, but really, we've come here tonight to generate light and not heat. Of course, one of the byproducts of generating the light is some heat, but we trust that this discussion will be congenial. We trust that Dr. Clymer and I can agree to disagree and still part friends tonight. Uh, we, what we are here for is to inform. And so we trust that as you leave this evening, you will have been informed, you'll find it interesting, and perhaps you will have gained a new perspective on this subject of origins. Now I want to say, first of all, what is not being debated here this evening? We're not debating the age of the earth, we're not debating the biblical record of creation. We're not debating any biblical interpretation or theology. We're here to debate this question of creation versus evolution. What is the most credible, reasonable, scientific explanation for origins, creation or evolution? That's the real subject of the debate. How did the universe and living organisms come into being? Did they come into being by a naturalistic, mechanistic, evolutionary process due to properties inherent in matter or by the deliberate, planned, creative acts of a creator who is external to and independent of the natural universe? That's the basic question that we are debating here this evening. Now, <clears throat> these do involve, of course, our personal world views, and that's true not only of the creationists, but also of the evolutionists. Richard Lewontin, professor of genetics at uh, Harvard University, an evolutionist, and whose uh, standard secular views needs no defense, he stated in the introduction to scientists confront creationism published in 1983, that there is a fundamental contradiction between evolution and cre creationism. They are irreconcilable worldviews, end of quote. I agree with that. Now, if evolution is a worldview and creation is a worldview, they're equally religious, you see. They involve our personal view of the universe and reality. Can, must we explain origin? in naturalistic, mechanistic terms, or is, it, is there a possibility that there is a God who is a creator, the origin could have been theistic and supernatural, you see. That is not a bit unscientific. Science is our attempt to observe, to understand and explain the operation of the universe and the operation of living things. It's our attempt to explain the here and now, now, when we step beyond the limits of empirical science and try to explain the origin of the universe and the origin of life, you see we're outside of the proper limits of science. You see, there were no human witnesses of the origin of the universe. There were no human witnesses of the origin of life. As a matter of fact, there were no human witnesses of the origin of a single living thing. 
Those were unique events. They only happened once in the unobservable past, and you cannot repeat those events today. You cannot test the theory on how a fish may have evolved an amphibian or ape into man. You cannot test the theory on how the universe may have evolved. Those are untestable theories.